Welcome to Reach Out for Life. It is our goal to present a thoughtful and practical Christianity for today, which you can discover with your mind and live to the full with your life. And now the host of Reach Out for Life, Dr. Larry Bryce. Welcome to our program today. We're delighted that you've decided to join us. Have you ever wondered how to be a success? not just in your own field, but to be a success on the world stage. We have a guest here today who was twice world champion at the triathlon. Meet our special guest today who's going to talk about success and winning, Darren Henry. Welcome to our program, Thank you, Darren. Larry. Good to be here. Thank you. Darren, what is the triathlon? You twice were world champion mm -hmm. as a Canadian. What is the triathlon? Well, triathlon is a sport where you start off with a swim, followed by a bike, and then finish off with a race with a run. How long is the race, Darren? Well, they have a, a variety of different distances. Okay. The distance that I do is an Olympic standard distance. It's a 1.5 kilometer swim, a 40 kilometer bike, and then a 10 kilometer run. Well, that's a major length of that. The swim alone is a mile long, isn't it? That's right, that's yeah. right. That's so the top finishers will finish approximately two hours, and uh, they have different categories within triathlon, and. It's okay. quite an exciting sport. Okay, Darren, you still hold the world record, don't you, That's in right. one of those events? What is that? Well, the category I'm in is in the over 200 pound category, so I'm the fastest triathlete over 200 pounds in that Olympic distance. top triathletes on the planet are in Edmonton this weekend, hoping to swim, bike, and run their way to a world championship. This year, though, along with the best, there are the biggest competitors. They're calling the Clydesdales. Despite weighing in at well over 200 pounds, Henry beat out 16 others from around the world to be crowned this year's Clydesdale Under-39 World Champion. motivated. Well, I was able to refocus and drive for that finish line and win and still break the world record by three minutes. Darren, you're a Christian, aren't you? I am. How did you become a Christian? Uh, is that a part of your sports career, uh, but first of all, we want to find out, how did you become a Christian? Well, I'm blessed to be raised in a family where they believed in Jesus Christ, and, and we always went to church, and that was always taught through me, uh, or to me, through all my life. We were just involved, and, and we were always within the Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and those were always important events. And during one of the vacation Bible schools, it was an, actually an artist who came in, and at that time, I think I was pretty young, but I gave my life to the Lord and I remember going home, kneeling beside my bed and then showing up the next day for vacation Bible school and telling the speaker, you know, I gave my life to Jesus Christ last night and it was exciting. Did it make a difference at the time, Dar Darren, or was it just a small turn in the road that made huge difference later on? I would say uh, at that time, you know, I knew that I needed to make that decision, but I don't think I understood the full implications of the Christian life at that age. Darren, how did you get interested in the triathlon? Where was that, university, or how did you get involved with that? Well, for, unfortunately for me at the time, I was, I was trying out for the basketball teams, and, and I thought I was going to make the university basketball team, but I didn't. On the you third went to cut, McMaster. That's right. I, went, I got cut at the third time at McMaster University, and uh, I just decided to get involved in triathlon. I really wanted to succeed in sport, and that was a lot of fun to me. 
Well, after starting at the age of 20, within five years, I then became a world champion in triathlon. Wow. It was what awesome. does it take, Darren? What does it take to be a world-class winner? What do, where do you find that? Well, there's obviously a whole lot of desire behind that. There is a real um, passion for what it is that you do. You have to love it. And for me, I took some time off university. I moved to Australia for some time to train. I traveled the world, and I had a huge financial investment as well as time, 30 to 40 hours a week of training. Darren, what is it that makes a winner? Is it native ability, natural ability or talent, or is it a desire, a matter of motivating yourself, or is it external conditions, uh, such as hereditary uh, in background, or what does it take, uh, Darren? I think there's a whole influence of many areas. Like if you're a basketball player, it's you know your chances are far higher if you're seven feet tall versus oh, sure. someone who's who's really short. However, I do believe that um, people who are absolutely driven and actually practice over and over. You think of how many hours that uh, an athlete will train preparing mm -hmm. for the Olympics, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, you know they're gifted in those areas. So they find their strengths. They find where they love doing, and then they take those strengths, what they love, and they practice over and over, nonstop for years on end. And that's world class. Darren, tell me something. Do you ever remember a time in your life when being a Christian has helped you uh, perform as a world class athlete? Well, I remember my very first ITU race, and that's uh, the International Triathlon Union. It's my first professional race as a, as a triathlete. and. Uh, I had another Christian friend and, and we sat down and prayed before this race and we just really gave it to God. We just said, hey, you know, this is our first time. We wanted to make it an exciting race, do our absolute best, but we just, we want to give you the glory, Lord. And, you know, we sat down and when I was on that starting line, I was so calm and I just wow. never felt so at ease just being able to give it and, uh, and to feel that the pressure is not on me. It just, I can perform to the best of my ability. Darren. Being a Christian sometimes is appear, appears like you're being a wimp in life. You're turning the other cheek and you're cast aside by the world. Is that true or can a Christian be just as competitive and aggressive in sport, just as much a winner as anybody else being a Christian? You know, I believe so, absolutely. I have never been in a sport where there's, for example, boxing where you're, where you're fighting with someone, but I believe within as an example, the Olympic standards, they have very clear criteria for what makes a competitor achieve. So with a boxer, you know, they have to attain a certain number of points. It's not to, you know, knock the person out and, and to make them hurt. Where a triathlon is, you know, you're striving for your absolute best. And that's where most of the athletes go. You're not just trying to go out there and beat everybody, but your personal best is something that's so critical of going after because that is what always pushes world class up to a higher level. And a Christian doesn't be less of that because they believe in Jesus Christ. In fact, it might even be more of a motivator, uh, do you think, Darren? Absolutely. Well, with Christ in their lives, you know, their glory is for God and God's glory is, you know, never ending. We can never fully reach that or attain that. So striving for our best and then giving God the glory, we can never stop. We can never have enough. But within this world, you know, we can become first place and people can just sit back and say, ah, that was it. Amen. And so Amen. where the competitive edge comes is you can never really complete, uh, uh, you know, a world-class performance for Christ. Amen. Amen. Darren, we have Christians in many different areas of life, in business, trade unions, uh, research, university positions, professors. Uh, Darren, how important is it that Christian leaders like yourself in sport or in other areas of life, how important is it that Christian leaders witness to their faith in Jesus Christ in our nation? I think it's crucial, and there are many ways to do it. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, stand at your front door of your office and tell everyone, okay, you need Jesus every time someone walks in. But being a role model and seeing how you behave in certain scenarios um, really says volumes, speaks volumes about who you are and where you stand in your own life. And uh, it takes a real courage to make that difference. Particularly, I think as men, we need to stand, make a stand, and be able to say, this is where I am, not only at home, but in my business. And it's not to shun people off or, or to, you know, rebuke them. It's to say, this is where I stand. This is why God is so important in my life. 
not just at home, but in business. And then that becomes contagious Christianity, doesn't it, Absolutely. Darren? Absolutely. Well, people right. will see how great God is in your life. And then they'll want to find the same for themselves. Absolutely. Uh, you're now a motivational speaker, Darren. That's right. Uh, how, how do people achieve success, not just in sports, but in business or in whatever field, as a student in school? How, how do you achieve success? Uh, do you have to have a lot of ab native ability, or is there something you can learn to, to be a success? I think uh, there's a lot of learned uh, abilities out of that. Uh, for example, when, when we talk about getting your heart, mind, and body behind a goal, most people set their goal and they make it very intellectual. Like, you know, they make it specific, they make it measurable, realistic, but their heart is not behind it. And therefore, you know, they, they very easily move back to their old habits. So when we talk about goal setting, we talk about using your emotions and driving your emotions towards what it is. And then also getting your mind behind it and then taking full action behind it. So if you can think, feel, and act towards your goals, you will become that much more successful like an athlete. They feel it, they think it, and then they act it out so effectively and they execute perfectly every time. That's great, Darren. And uh, tell me, how important is the church in your life today, Darren? Uh, 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 I know that you're a Christian, that mm -hmm. you probably go to church. Just how important is that church connection in your life? It's crucial. Uh, one of the things that my wife and I, we have uh, the foundation of Christ in our home. And so that's where everything begins. And, you know, Christ just doesn't live in our homes. He lives everywhere. So in our community, we need to make sure ourselves and we are based in a community of other believers so that we can be supported and we can support others. And as we share the gospel with many other people who have not either heard or who have not committed their lives to Christ, that they too will be able to make that difference and, and be able to support each other. Yeah. Darren, tell me, do you have prayers with your wife every day? We pray often, absolutely. Okay, or often, even several times a day sometimes. Well, I would say every night we pray. And Together. That's, that's what we do. We, we okay. lie in bed at night and we talk okay. about our day and we pray about our day. Great, great. Absolutely. That's terrific, Darren. Darren, maybe there's someone watching today who wants to find Jesus Christ as you did, who wants to make something of their life, who need Christ and his power in their life and something to really catch on to and motivate them through their life. Could you speak to that camera and speak to that person today just as you found Christ in your own life? Absolutely. I would like to invite you to take this opportunity to think about the accomplishments and all the wonderful things that this world has to offer and then put that into perspective that it is only temporary. I've won gold medals, I've sought out status and, and had great success. However, it will too fade away. So the only victory we can have for long term and that's eternity is through Jesus Christ. And I would like to invite you to take this moment to pray with me to just say, Christ, I would like to make that personal commitment to you to accept you into my heart and I ask that you Jesus will become the Lord the master and I will become victorious with knowing and living my life for you if you take a few minutes just to make that declaration and then share it with maybe your pastor or a friend who is a Christian and let them know that you want to live a life for Christ your life will be different not necessarily easy but you can be sure that you can live for eternity with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Darren, I want to thank you for being on our program today. You're not only a world-class achiever, you're a godly man too, and God bless you. you for being on our program. It was a real pleasure, Larry. Thank you. Write to us today for your own copy of Dr. Larry Bryce's new book, Confident Faith in a World that Wants to Believe. This book demonstrates that you can find a confident faith in God from the study of the natural world that God has created, as well as reliable evidence for God revealed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. This book will strengthen faith for every reader, and Dr. Bryce goes beyond just the academic proof by showing how he has proven this faith in his own personal experience. Everyone who has faced adversity will find Larry's testimony in this book a great encouragement. Readers are now raving how good a book this is for building faith and giving hope in God. Please note our new address, Reach Out Ministries, 
27 Ashbury Lane, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y0A4. We always appreciate every letter that we receive and want you to know how important your financial gifts are to keeping us on the air. Again, please note our new address, Reach Out Ministries, 27 Ashbury Lane, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y0A4. That's Reach Out Ministries, 27 Ashbury Lane, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y0A4. Our guest today, Darren Henry, is a most charming young man. Darren has given his life to the Lord as a young boy, and the Lord has certainly blessed him with world championships and still holding a world record in one of his events. It reminds me of a passage in Ecclesiastes that says this, Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days come when you take no pleasure in them. Darren did remember his Creator in public school. He came by faith, personal faith to Jesus Christ. And God has greatly honored him. God has taken Darren and his natural talent and has given him the motivation and the desire for excellence that has made him, one, made him the best in the wor entire world. Darren came to the Lord in his youth, to the Creator in his youth. It's not just youth who should come to the Creator, but all of us, no matter what time we are in in our lifetime. The church should really have a special ministry to children and young people. It's so important to get off to a good start in life. It's so important that it doesn't need to be a mega church. It can be a church of any size that has programs for children and youth as well as programs for families and seniors. The church should minister to all the generations. The church has a responsibility for everyone. But uh, so many people, maybe you're one of them, has postponed going to church or coming to the Lord. Maybe you thought the church is filled with old people. Why should I be with old people? The church is just for the elderly. Well, the church is for everyone. The church gives us something special when we attend. It's like we put a deposit every time we go to church. We put a deposit in our spiritual bank account. And when those days of trouble come, as they do to everyone, even young people have problems, serious problems, failure at school, broken relationships, unable to find a job, as all ages can find these problems present in their life. The church gives us, when we attend, a special deposit in our hearts that strengthens us and equips us to handle those difficult times in life. I remember in my first pastoral charge having a conference with funeral directors, and we asked them, do you notice any difference between those who attend church and those who don't attend church when they come to you to make arrangements for funerals for their loved ones? And they really lit up and said, yes, we notice quite a difference. The ones, both church attenders and unchurch attenders, have the same amount of grief and hurt in their hearts, but there's a big difference those who attend church seem to have something inside to draw upon. It helps them to cope and get through that difficult time to make arrangements for a loved one. That's what happens when you go to church. Won't you come to Christ today and receive the blessing of your Creator? It's more than a New Year's resolution when we come to Jesus Christ by faith. So often the church thinks it's enough to uh, emphasize moral improvement in our life. That's what a New Year's resolution is. It's a desire, a will to morally improve ourselves. Maybe there's a bad habit we want to kick. Maybe we want to give up smoking or we want to diet 
or we want to start exercise. I've had many of these New Year's resolutions, and maybe you're like me and have found that they didn't stick more than a few days or a few weeks because it was just a matter of our willpower. It was something, it was centered on ourselves. It's completely different when you come to Jesus Christ. It's coming to Jesus Christ, you surrender yourself to Almighty God. You put yourself under the control of Almighty God. You give your heart and your life to Christ, and He works within you. When people surrender to Jesus Christ, it's not a matter of moral improvement by our willpower. It's a conversion from one state to another. When you apply heat to ice, it converts it into something different, into water. It's a different state. When people come to Christ, sometimes they say, I never experienced very much when I did that. But you know, I woke up the next morning and I didn't have a desire to drink. Or I was able to stop that life-killing habit that I was into. Conversion does that when we come to Jesus Christ and surrender to him. Won't you come to Jesus Christ today? I want to share with you a verse from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12, that says this, To all who receive him, meaning Jesus Christ, to those who believe in his name, he gave the power or the authority to become the children of God. Notice the power to become a child of God is given when we receive Christ and believe on his name. What does it mean to receive Christ? What does it mean when a husband's wife gives birth to a baby and the doctor comes out with the news, the good news, the gospel, that the baby is born? He receives that good news with great joy. That's what it means to receive Jesus Christ, to receive the good news, the gospel of what he has done on our behalf. He has lived in our place the life we ought to live, fulfilling all righteousness. He has died on the cross, the penalty we deserve for our death, in order that we might receive his righteousness. There's a great exchange at the cross. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. That's the conversion at the cross. It may not feel like very much at the time that you do it, but when you receive Christ and the news, the good news of what he's done for us and believe on his name, that's how we receive it. We simply believe it. There's nothing we could do to earn heaven or forgiveness. We're sinners. The Bible says all our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. We don't grovel in it. We don't spend our time thinking of how bad we are. We just acknowledge that we need the gift of God's grace in order to go to heaven. We need his free gift of his love and his forgiveness and his grace. And that leads to a conversion, a birth from above, a new life. And that's what we find at the cross of Jesus Christ. To all who receive him, to those who believe on his name, he gave the power or the authority to become a child of God. Notice the power when we receive Christ, into our lives. He gives us his Holy Spirit. He empowers us from his authority on high. He clothes us with his power from on high, enables us to live the kind of life we ought to live. Look at Darren Henry, the magnificent example of an athlete that he is, and the wonderful example of a Christian that he is, because he's converted at the cross of Jesus Christ. Won't you come to Christ today? Won't you receive him? Won't you believe on what he's done for you? All you need to do is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you died in my place. Yes, Lord, I received your penalty that you paid on my behalf for my sin. Yes, Lord, I receive your forgiveness. Yes, Lord, I receive your gift of eternal life. Please, I receive it now. And all you need to do, yes means amen. And if you can say amen to that yes to Jesus, 
He's given you eternal life. I want to give you a promise that Jesus made. He said this, you've now taken, before I give you the promise, I want to say you've now taken your first step toward God in Jesus Christ. And Jesus said this, all who come to me, I will never drive away. You've taken your first step to Jesus Christ. You've come to him by faith. And he says he will never, ever drive you away. That's his promise in the Holy Bible, the Word of God. It's his promise to you. Don't be defeated by those habits and problems that we face. He will give you his power through his Holy Spirit. And he will give you what we sometimes sing in the chorus, victory in Jesus. Continue to walk with him. You may have many steps to take, but you've come to Jesus. He Now he will never drive you away. God bless you, dear friend, and continue to walk with the Lord. Write to us today for your own copy of Dr. Larry Bryce's new book, Confident Faith in a World that Wants to Believe. This book demonstrates that you can find a confident faith in God from the study of the natural world that God has created, as well as reliable evidence for God revealed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. This book will strengthen faith for every reader, and Dr. Bryce goes beyond just the academic proof by showing how he has proven this faith in his own personal experience. Everyone who has faced adversity will find Larry's testimony in this book a great encouragement. Readers are now raving how good a book this is for building faith and giving hope in God. Please note our new address, Reach Out Ministries, 27 Ashbury Lane, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y0A4. That's Reach Out Ministries, 27 Ashbury Lane, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y0A4. One of my favorite parts of the week is when I go to the post office to pick up the letters that you write to us. Here's one from a viewer near Windsor, Ontario. To whom it may concern, I was watching your TV program and I thought that your book looks like a good book, so I'm writing to please send me a copy. Thank you. Yes, we do enjoy sending out books and we pray over every letter and every book that we send out for you. Here's another from a viewer from North York. Dear Pastor, I thank you for the fortune of seeing your program on television and how blessed I was to hear a simple question and answers surrounding the doctrine of salvation. My real prayer is that your program continue to air each Sunday to expound the truth based on God's holy word. Someone writing from New North York. We do appreciate your letters. We look forward to hearing from you. We'd love to send you our book with our prayers as well. God bless you. Please keep in mind that there are expenses to bring this television program to you. So if you are able, please help to keep us on the air through your prayers and financial support. Every prayer and gift is a blessing to the ministry. Thank you and God bless you for your part in our ministry together. Remember today, reach out for life. Reach out for Jesus Christ.